Good morning. I'm, I'm Teresa Wilson, city manager. Um, welcome. So, ironically, as we approach the anniversary, almost to the day, of the 2015 flood, October 2015, historic rain event and flooding experienced in the Midlands of South Carolina, we gather again to reassure our communities that we are working hard and we do have your backs after the aftermath and as we are still in the midst of Hurricane Helene. Um, certainly, we wanna give a little perspective first that we uplift those who, who have experienced loss and damages as a result of this storm right here in our region, but certainly across all of the Southeast. Um, Helene did not discriminate, and let me be really clear about that, here in the Midlands on where or how her destruction impacted every single neighborhood um, and demographic across the Midlands. We've all felt it. Everyone in this room has felt it in some way personally or with family members and are still dealing with the results. It was evident um, in 2015 though, and it is evident today, that partnership and collaboration work. Um, the partners in this room and many others who are not here with us today, but from the county, the state and federal levels are working together to ensure a continu continuity of service delivery for our communities. Um, two distinctions that I want to make really clear up front between 2015 and today. Um, mass flooding and the threat to our main drinking water source were critical issues in 2015. That is not the case today. And we're going to talk about that in great detail very shortly with our Assistant City Man Manager of Columbia Water, Clint Sheely, who will address what we know and we understand why the anxiety about the rising river levels and any um, concern about the status of our water and wastewater treatment plants. We are in good shape and we feel even better since overnight. Um, however, the other distinction that is of major concern we know to, to our communities is widespread power outages. And we're very thankful that Mr. Keller Kassam and his team, Keller, the president of Dominion Energy of South Carolina, um, are here with us today to share updates. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mayor Rickman, who will give his remarks and welcome Keller to provide updates. And then we'll follow with additional updates from staff and of course our wonderful public safety officials. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. First of all, I want to take the opportunity to thank all the teams that have been working together around the clock for the last several days. That's I mean, everybody from our public works to our folks that work in our wastewater and our water treatment to our firefighters, to our police officers, all the first responders across. And I also want to take a moment, you know, remember that this, this hit the Southeast. It hit a lot of folks a lot worse than it did here. But this is the third largest destructive hurricane that's hit the southeast in the last 50 years. We haven't seen how wide out power outages and the issues trees down over 200 and something trees in our community since Hugo came through. We're addressing those issues. And I ask, first of all, I need to say this. I ask our public, please verify the information before you share it. There are a lot of rumors going around about our drinking water and all types of things that are creating panic where people don't need panic. People are already suffering. They've damaged. They haven't had power in several days. We're working together to resolve that. But please do not spread rumors. Please do not spread information that you have not verified. It is detrimental. You're doing more harm than good. And, and I hope you'll listen to us on that. You know, we have so many crews out there right now working you see people all over and i want to remind people just because you don't see somebody outside your door or down your street that doesn't mean that they aren't working across this city to to bring back power to make sure that everything's cleaned up and that we get back to a normal operating procedure across the city that means people back in schools that means people back at work people with power and and food we do have several places across the city that you'll hear more about that are open. If you need a shower, changing 
uh, charging stations, a place to change clothes, or just to get out of the heat if, if you've uh, got too much heat um, from being in your house. I know it's been very warm and humid over these last few days. But I also want to make sure that you know that we're working with everybody from our congressional district. I just got off the phone with Senator Scott, who is also helping as mayor, former mayor Steve Benjamin from the White House has reached out to make sure that we're getting the resources we need. We're coordinating all the way across uh, all lines. But I think what we want to do is also allow you to have an opportunity to hear the updates from each one of our different departments. But I want to start off. Um, with Keller Kassam, um, who has done nothing but work hard with us, who has done nothing but share information with us, but I think he's going to give you a lot of details. When you have 90-plus transmission lines go down, that creates a problem that we I don't know that we've ever seen in a, a storm since Hugo. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Keller Kassam. Keller, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First and foremost, I just want to send out our sincere regret to all of our customers who are there in the dark, understand that our number one priority is restoring power. It's always a privilege to work with the City of Columbia, the Mayor, as well as his Council and staff to provide updates so they can be of service to you. One of the Council members said he didn't want, it, he didn't want stones, he wants rocks. He wants details about where our crews are and what we're doing. So I'm going to try to give you some of those rocks. First thing we had to do is the mayor said we had transmission that was devastated through this storm. And understand, this is a Category 4. People talk about Hurricane Hugo. It also was a Category 4. And if you can imagine, Columbia is just like between McClellanville and Charlotte in the aftermath of Hugo. As this storm came up, and think, the energy bands went out 350 miles. Well, Tallahassee to Columbia is 292 miles. So therefore, as soon as it ran up the Savannah River, it released all of that energy this way. The rain, it went off to the west, but all the winds came over to the east. Right now, we've cleaned up all of the low country and all of our crews are moving here. And then ultimately, when we clean up Columbia, and hopefully that'll be done by Thursday, by Thursday, estimated time of restoration, that everybody is back on in Columbia that can receive power. And when I say can receive power, what I mean by that is if you have a tree that has come in and torn down the weatherhead on your house where the service line goes in and it has pulled that weatherhead off your house, you need to get a certified electrician to come in there, repair the weatherhead, the meter can if it is damaged, and then we can come in and put that service line back up. So it's important that you focus on that. Now let's talk about safety because that's most important before we get to the numbers and how I get down into detail of the restoration and what you're going to see in the neighborhoods today. There have been a number of hospitals that have reported carbon monoxide poisoning. And Chief Jenkins will probably talk about that, but don't have generators in your house running any appliances inside. Don't have any grills where you're cooking inside. Carbon monoxide is an odorless, colorless gas, and it will kill you. So do not do that. Also, stay away from downed power lines. There are a lot of power lines that are down. Stay away from them. You don't know if they're energized or not, so stay away. Assume they are energized and keep your kids away from them as well. In addition to that, if there are any trees out there, a lot of chainsaws, people running, if you've got lines in those trees, understand even if they're telecommunications and you've identified them, they're under great stress. Cutting trees is one of the most dangerous jobs our linemen perform from the standpoint of everything's under tension. And when you cut that limb, that cable is going to spring back and it can take your head off. So we started out here in the greater Columbia metropolitan area with 162,000 customers out. So what we had to do is get the helicopters in the air. We couldn't do that on Friday because the wind speeds were going too much. So we actually had two days. We had Saturday, we had Sunday, and then today. Three days. Hurricane Hugo took us 18 days to have restoration. That won't be the case here, but just give you a comparison. We've had more transmission lines out in the state with Helene than we did with Hugo to give you the magnitude. So we have to patrol. Once we patrol, we put the saw on the bottom of the copter, it goes out there and it cuts and gets these trees off the transmission. Then once you restore, and that's why people say, I didn't see any crews in my neighborhood. That's because they got to work the transmission. Then we got to work the substations, those fenced in areas in your neighborhood that reduce the voltage to get to your homes. But then yesterday again, people said, I don't see any crews in my neighborhood. I ride around, I don't see crews in the neighborhood. 
Well, you may live five to six miles away from your substation. And we are worked yesterday on getting all the major circuits, tap level circuits on. I had someone call me from a neighborhood off Farrow Road and they said, I don't see any crews in my neighborhood. I said, that's because they're out on Farrow Road where that main feeder is, it's bringing electricity into your neighborhood. It doesn't do any good to sit there and work a single outage at somebody's house when there's going to be no power coming to it. So that's how we progress through this. It is the most safest, efficient means of restoring power. I'm happy to report that within the city of Columbia, we were at 38,000 customers out within the city limits at peak. Uh, that's down to 8,000 today. Um, for the whole metropolitan area, we're at 162,000 and we're down to 30,000 right now. That takes into Lexington, Chapin, and all those other regions. Today will be a good day of progress because you'll see more trucks in your neighborhoods today because they've gone from the mainline feeds to working the tap level outages that you see. So I know when I give you those numbers, I'm not trying to show you the progress because what I'm focusing on is not the progress we made, but those 8,000 customers in the city of Columbia that are still in the dark, as are most of my linemen who are your neighbors and your friends whose families sit in the dark while they're out there busting it to get the power back on. So please understand we will not stop until we get the power back on, but I can tell you today we've moved from the stones down to the rocks and that's the plan and we'll be in the neighborhoods, you'll see us, you'll see two man bucket trucks instead of the big 55 foot material handlers because they'll be in there. I will tell you, the mayor touched on the tree damage. There are a lot of broken poles a whole lot of broken poles. In addition to that, everybody says, well, undergrounding, let's underground all the lines. With all the uprooted trees, there's a lot of underground electric that's exposed and broken along the sidewalks that you'll see. We just want everybody to be safe. We ask for your patience. We're gonna to continue to work around the clock until the very last person has power restored. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Clint Sheely. As Ms. Wilson said, I'm assistant city manager for Columbia Water. Um, we've had a lot of concerns on social media and, and a lot of rumors swirling around that um, our water supply is threatened and that we're going to turn the water off or we're going to have to boil our water. None of that is true. It couldn't be further from the truth. Um, I was just out on the canal looking at the river. The river levels are very, very high. They're approaching the levels that we saw in 2015, but this event is very different than what we saw in 2015. And we're in a very different place than we were in 2015 in terms of preparedness. So I wanna alleviate concerns and tell you with no, with, without a shadow of a doubt, our, our canal supply is stable and operating exactly as intended. We don't anticipate that changing. We are monitoring that very closely. We've been monitoring it for days and we'll do that until the river levels recede. But again, we are operating as designed and as intended and are not under a threat um, condition right now. So I wanna alleviate those fears. Again, the river is very high. It is cresting even as we speak. We think we're seeing the, the peak elevations coming through um, the Columbia area for the Broad and the, and the Congaree. And so um, we are, um, we're managing that. There are no evacuations. There's been a rumor that we're evacuating either our Lake Murray water plant or canal water plant or our Metro wastewater treatment plant. Couldn't be further from the case. Our men and women are working there right now as they have been around the clock, as they do 365 days a year, 24 seven. So we're there, we're operating, no evacuations happening. No need to boil your water. We have zero customers under a boil water advisory right now. Um, We'll typically issue boil water advisories if there was a treatment plant upset. We're seeing really high turbidities in the source water from the Broad River, but we're handling that. We have the equipment necessary and the treating compounds necessary to address that. And so the water quality leaving the treatment plant is excellent. No concern there in terms of customers needing to boil the water. And we don't, as of when I left the office just a few minutes ago, we didn't have any line breaks that would cause localized boil water advisories to be in effect. So we're doing really, really well there. Um, this situation is, again, very different than 2015, although the river level is approaching what we saw in 2015. We had flow coming over land from, from the city, from the heavy rains, flowing directly into the canal. 
we didn't have the control over the head gates that we have. And every tropical storm media briefing that you've seen me at over the last nine years, you've heard me talk about this interim but very robust solution of a rock dam that is in place in our canal itself. All those tools are still in place. And again, they're operating as intended and things are working like they're supposed to. If anything were different, we would be letting you know. I assure you we will be transparent and we'll let you know the moment we know that something is different. Right now, everything is operating as intended and we don't anticipate anything different. We did have a few customers around 15 or so out of water Thursday evening into Friday on Tall Pine Circle. We had about 100 foot of section of water main that was uh, along the road. The road washed away, it washed away our infrastructure. Um, service was restored to those customers on Friday morning and that service continues to those. So um, again, very, very isolated. In 2015, if you'll remember, we had widespread flooding that washed away a lot of our infrastructure. And so we lost service to a lot of customers then. That's not the case for this event. So those are some of the differences, but again, our, our interim solution for water supply working very, very well. So just wanna reassure folks of that. We have lost, um, obviously lost power at some of our water pumping stations out in the distribution system. And we're working with Dominion Energy and our partners at the co-op that supply um, power to those to get those back online power. We had generators in place or either pulled generators to those sites so that our customers never knew the difference in terms of pressure and supply. So let's talk a little bit about our wastewater collection system and metro treatment plant. Um, we have seen unusually, um, um, really historically high flows. As the river increases, it has inundated our, our pump station that we have that's around the USC baseball stadium. We call it our West Columbia pump station. It's currently inaccessible um, by, by land, um, only by boat. Um, so a lot of our, our, um, dis our collection system assets in terms of piping along the river is underwater right now. So really, really hard to assess whether we're having a sanitary sewer overflow or not. We know that we are taking a good bit of the river and conveying that then to the met metro wastewater plant. So very, very high flows coming to us. As the river recedes, we'll have a better understanding of any damage that has happened along the river to our wastewater collection assets. Um, but again, we're operating, we're seeing very high flows at Metro, the river is starting to back up into the treatment plant, so we're not able to get the, the treated wastewater out. We're, doing, we're using every tool we've got to treat the wastewater and disinfect it, and um, so we're trying to minimize any harm to the environment that may occur there. Working with Department of Environmental Services, I was just on the phone with them before we stepped into the room, so they, they understand the situation that we and many others are in from a waste collection and treatment standpoint. So um, our primary focus right now is to make sure we don't spill sewer in the streets, in areas where the public might get to it, or back it up into your homes. And we're, we're being successful in meeting that objective. So we, we plan for that to continue. I'll, I'll close with this. I want to thank our, um, our staff and, and team that's been working around the clock to keep water and wastewater services to our customers and to, to minimize any disruptions that you might have. If you do have a water service disruption or a wastewater issue, please call 803-545-3300, 803-545-3300. That's the number to call to report a non-emergency and we'll have crews out and address your, your issue promptly. So, thank you. Good morning, my name is Robert Anderson. I'm the Public Works Director for the City of Columbia. And I want to begin by thanking and stating how proud I am of our public works crews that have went out for the last three or four days as they try to reopen the roads and deal with some of the localized flooding. Our response continues and it will include the cleanup process of our city to make it safe once again for everybody. So I'm going to give a, just a quick overview of what we've done so far and what we're kind of dealing with today. Our forestry and beautification divisions had a little over 200 uh, <clears throat> calls for service with trees, limbs. So 21 of those are currently have lines entangled on them. We know Dominion's working on them as they clear them. We will return to clear the streets and make sure they're passable. Uh, our crews continue to work today. We've got five that do not have power lines in them. Uh, two or three of them have been cleared since I've been here since about 1030. And 20 roads are impassable right now to, to, due to the trees that are down in the roads. As they clear them, as they clear the lines, and some of these are not with lines in them, 
we will clear the roads. Our solid waste division started today by cleaning to begin to clean up our city. So it will take several weeks to clean this up. We will be working six days a week with those crews. What we do is ask for patience. You know, our, our roads are gonna become narrow with when people cut the debris and get it out there or clean up their yards. So, you know, try to respect your motorists of if the road becomes one lane of, of passing and, and stopping and letting somebody else go. Uh, we do have containers at four different locations. They are at Hyatt Park, Rosewood Park, Heathwood Park and Woodlands Park. They're roll off containers and we've placed them there to allow people that don't wanna wait for the trash guy to come by on their day, that they can take their yard debris that they rake up out of their yard and place it in those containers. Then we'll take those containers and dump them and bring them back to the site for the next few weeks. Once again, for the solid waste crews, we ask for patience. This will take a while to get to. So our street division, our street division really got busy Thursday with our localized flooding of streets. We put out a lot of barricades, but all of those closures that we had Thursday through early Friday are, have been rescinded on city streets. They're all open and ready to go. But with our flooding in the Broad River, we have been forced to close Lost Creek Drive. So Lost Creek Drive is closed at the Chestnut Hills subdivision, which is down off of Broad River Road. So we ask anybody that's trying to cut through Lost Creek at Broad River and Harbison, or, or Broad River and Lost Creek, or Hollingshed and Lost Creek to take alternate direction. As the water recedes, I think Clint uh, touched on it that we are starting post, possibly, you know, with the water starting to recede. As the water recedes with the flow that's been through our culvert there, we are going to want to reinspect the culvert to make sure it's safe for passage before we reopen the road. So just because the water goes down, doesn't mean we're gonna reopen the road. We're gonna need a couple days for uh, an engineering firm to get in and look at structurally to make sure the bridge is safe for travel and then we'll clean the road up also. So the street division will continue to assist forestry and our solid waste division in cleanup. Our traffic engineering division as the power is restored to intersections will continue to look at those intersections, make sure they're functioning properly, make sure that all the lights are functioning properly. There are still intersections that are out throughout the city. We can't stress enough to treat them as four-way stops until the power comes back on. Have respect for everybody that's passing through there. Um, and I will also reiterate, do not touch any lines down or think they're de-energized. We want the crews that are experienced to do this, and that would be Dominion, so we can come in and clear the road afterwards. So thank you. Thank you, Director Anderson, uh, and good morning. My name is Henry Simons. I'm the Assistant City Manager of Operations, and I'm here to give you an update on what the resources that we're going to provide or we are providing uh, our community. Uh, we have activated our temporary shelter at Greenview Park, uh, which is located at 6700 David Street. We are actually in our third day of activation for residents without power. Uh, the shelter has opened uh, daily at 6 p.m., and will remain open until further notice. Uh, we have set up uh, to accommodate 50 residents uh, with the capacity to expand if needed. Uh, we have 50 cots available that includes personal hygiene kits, linen kits, which includes pillows and blankets. Of course, residents are encouraged to bring their own toiletry items and additional pillows and blankets as needed. Uh, the shelter also has charging stations, Wi-Fi connectivity, games for kids, public use computers, available and we have the capacity to provide breakfast, lunch, uh, and dinner uh, throughout the duration of this event. Uh, we're actually uh, available to serve dinner at Greenview Park this afternoon or this evening at 7 p.m. Uh, we encourage citizens um, to be aware of any elderly neighbors or individuals with medical needs that require electricity. We have several parks that are open. We released that to, to you all earlier this morning about the availability of our parks and encourage them to use those areas as charging stations as well. Uh, if you don't desire to remain overnight, um, please feel free to come and, and charge your devices, utilize our open park facilities uh, throughout the day. We do have an additional location uh, where we can provide showers, which is the Charles R. Drew Center, uh, located at 2101 Walker Solomon Way uh, here in Columbia. And this center will close actually at 6 p.m. Uh, this evening. Um, if you have any questions or you are seeking shelter 
at our temporary shelter location, please call our customer care our center at 803-545-3300. In addition, in addition to that, uh, we've heard some concerns uh, regarding the ability to acquire fuel throughout this region. I want to assure you that our fleet services division within the city of Columbia has been in contact with our fuel suppliers and they're, they're not experiencing any issues with receiving and delivering fuel. So we are good in terms of fuel capacity at our three fueling stations in the city of Columbia. We actually have confirmed that one of our vendors will deliver fuel trucks tomorrow morning. So we are good in terms of capacity at our fueling stations. Again, if there are any concerns, if there, there's a need for temporary shelter, please uh, notify us and we will assist as needed. Thank you. At this time, we want to hear from our public safety officials. Um, it's so critical, we know, to reassure the public during times when individuals may be displaced from their homes that we are keeping this city and this county safe and secure. So I'd ask that Chief Jenkins come up to speak first, but then all three of, I call them the three musketeers, that Chief Holbrook and Chief Jenkins and Sheriff Locke come up together and all of them will give you comments from their perspectives. So thank you all for being here. And as the city manager said, us being the three musketeers, the three amigos, but what she didn't tell you is she always yawned if I become four. <laughs> so but anyway, uh, just want to kind of give you a perspective of what, what we saw during, during this time. Certainly during, during the peak time of the storm, uh, our operation period was about 24 hours. We probably ran close to 300, close to 358 calls. Those calls for service included trees on, on homes, uh, also gas line cut, gas leaks, uh, um, accidents, power lines down, both arcing and non-arcing. Uh, we ran, I don't know, we had a couple of house fires that we had to deal with. But the one thing I do want to iterate is that although that peak period is over, remember we're still in the same posture. We still got stuff going on. We still running calls, uh, sporadically, uh, power lines down. If, if you, one thing I also want to iterate to you, if you do have a, power, a tree on your home, do not stay there. The weight from that tree could collapse the structure, and then we're going to come in and come get you out of there. We had to rescue several people out of their own homes, including a trailer where somebody got seriously injured. I uh, don't know what they're, what, what's going on with them right now. But those are the type of things that we ran. And then also, you always hear the acronym about turn around, don't drown. Remember, there is a, the river is rising. And what we have done, we have actually put on more boat teams just in case we, we need those uh, boat teams to go out and get people. So we're ready. We're sitting on ready. We always try to prepare for the worst, even if it's not. That's what we do. We prepare for the worst. So the other thing I, I do want to encourage everyone, if you do not have power, do not use candles. Try your best to get flashlight, use it for that purpose, a uh, flashlight. But as um, was alluded earlier, if you're using generators, make sure those generators are running outside uh, because you don't want it on the inside with you because you could be dying, and this may sound funny, you can be dying and not knowing because the carbon dioxide will kill you. And it won't let you know that's killing you. So we want to just encourage you to do that. Just so just just stay safe out there. If you see anything out there, make sure you give us a call. As was said about the down power lines. You don't know if they live, you don't know. We'll come out, we'll assess it. And what I got my fire marks that I'm doing right now is going to all the homes that got trees on top of them and assessing whether they're they, somebody should be inside of them. But again, if you got a tree on your home, you do not need to be inside. If you don't have power, make sure you take an RV caution not to use, uh, I'm gonna restate that, not to use candles. Because you, you you go to sleep, the candle burning, it can, get, it can get tipped over, and guess what? That's you. So all these things, you just need to make sure you're taking precautions. We're, we're there. Uh, I do wanna thank my two colleagues right here because we work so good together. Um, there's nothing that I do that they don't know and vice versa. So we were real good together and we appreciate it. 
also want to thank the, the leadership of this, this city because they give us the tools to work with our mayor, our, our, our council, and our city manager. So we appreciate that. And also we work real well with our EOC as well. So we thank Chief Tent as well. I know my place. That's one of the first times he would acquiesce to me going first. Uh, good morning. Um, um, I, before I give some remarks, I do want to um, comment that it, it's incredible the difference between 2015 to today. Um, our partnerships have always been strong, but um, uh, this, this, this team that the city manager has assembled uh, just impresses me all the time when we have to spin up for critical incidents. But um, after 2015, uh, Ms. Wilson prioritized emergency management and response and was supported by our elected officials and, and they have continued to support um, that priority and you're standing in um, in a place that is a result of that priority and um, it's what allows us to do our job at maximum efficiency and I'm so appreciative of that and to be part of this team. Um, I, I would start by saying thank you to our citizens. Um, they've been incredible in this difficult time. Um, we've seen just dozens and dozens of acts of citizens helping citizens um, and that is uh, always inspiring. Um, they have stayed off the roadway for the most part, um, which has helped us be able to respond um, to protecting property and responding to emergencies. And then I would also say thank you to our, our officers and all of our city staff. Um, as was previously mentioned, um, our officers and staff, um, they are moms and dads and have families too that are affected by this. And we have a number of officers um, that are dealing with personal challenges um, as they continue to work to protect this city. Um, a quick rundown from the police department, um, um, beginning at um, 1100 on Thursday through 0600 this morning, we've responded to um, just over 2000 calls for service. Um, some significant um, things to note, uh, 149 accidents, 198 alarms. We've, re we've reported to specifically meet with the citizen uh, just over 300 times. We've had 74 roadways that we've had to um, assist with that were blocked and we've had 21 traffic uh, control points that we've been with we've manned. We've, we've had just a small number of what we consider to be significant incidents attributed to the storm. We've had four um, break-ins. Um, that's extremely low and again um, I think it's um, people staying off the roads allowing us to be um, proactive. We've had success with our saturation patrols to um, guard our neighborhoods. Uh, we made arrests in, um, in each of those break-ins, and one of them included um, uh, two, two locations where businesses were damaged and people went into businesses. Um, um, one was after a fire, and we made apprehensions in those. Um, and again, that's a testament to the work that the police officers are doing um, being vigilant and patrolling. Our entertainment districts, um, believe it or not, uh, were alive and well uh, during this um, emergency, and uh, they both um, had uh, in the Vista and in Five Points, we had no issues and we had moderate crowds. Uh, we continue to uh, work with our partners um, um, to have saturation patrols in our affected areas. We do have some intersections we're continuing to man, and um, as uh, just know that in your neighborhoods where there is power outages after dark, um, there is a um, police presence and you'll see that between the city and the county. Um, we had um, state assets that, that assisted us Saturday night and again for the purposes just to reassure the public that we're there and uh, uh, just like Ms. Wilson said uh, we got your back. Thank you. We talk about the three of us having partnerships. Yesterday was evident at, at, on how quickly we were able to make a decision to close the public access to the river. Jenkins called me. We both agreed that something needed to be done. It was done very quickly. Uh, in 2015, we worked very closely together and we continue to do that, and you will see that. Uh, as far as the Sheriff's Department, our call volume has been very low when it comes to crimes. We've answered a lot of calls for people that needed help. Um, we had deputies, um, a chainsaw crew that went out and cut trees and cleared some of the roads, which is, you know, people say, well, why are you doing that? That's something that we can do. We have people trained that. Uh, with the schools being closed, that gives us 107 deputies that we can put out in the community. So you would see high visibility 
I think is very important that reassures people. It also sends a message to anybody out there that's going to commit a crime is that we're out here. You're going to see us. Our senior citizens, our Project Hope, we're making sure that we check on all our senior citizens to make sure that they have the basic needs that they, have, they need to have. If it's medical or whatever, if they need transportation, we're going to provide that to them. But again, you're seeing us work as one team, and we're going to continue to do that. Um, some of us are very inconvenienced right now because some of the things that we're used to, we don't have. But that's just an inconvenience. That inconvenience will end. The other will tell you, it's, it's going to end. Just be patient. Be patient when you go to the store. No need to get in a fist fight over a loaf of bread or a bag of ice at the gas station or cutting in line to get gas. It will be there when you need it. So just be patient. We, we're going to make this through this together. Uh, it is a lot different in 2015. Um, the destruction in some areas we don't have, but we've got the flooding now, so we have to look, look out for that. But people will just be patient, rely on us, be assured that we have your backs, like the city manager said. Uh, we're going to work together. We're going to provide you what you need. But when it comes from safety, three of us right here, we work as one team, one team to make sure that the Richland County and the City of Columbia is safe. So just be patient. So, you know, every time when you talk, you kind of neglect to make mention of things. I do want to let you all know that all firefighters were super. I mean, they really rose up to the occasion. If they worked all night with, with no sleep, a lot of them stayed on the next day to make sure that, that you all were safe. They put themselves in, in harm's way, even one of our trucks. I know you heard about the firefighters that uh, died when, when the tree fell on, on their truck. Well, we had a tree hit our truck as well, but by the grace of God, uh, they okay. So I just want to give kudos to my firefighters, all of them who, I mean, they, they just work so well together. So I just want to make sure I mention that. Yeah, Chief Jenkins is right. It goes without saying all across the city and county, you know, public service is where it's at. Our, our first responders are working so hard. Our water and wastewater treatment staff members. I mean, if you think about what the type of work they're doing and they are doing it right now as raging waters are coming up on them, but yet we are still in a status of, of of having excellent service, you know, no boil water advisories, as Assistant City Manager Sheely said, it is really to be commended and we have to be so thankful. So I, I thank God for them every day and we all love on them and we, we hope that as a community, you all will help us to do the same. Um, I certainly wanted to recognize our two council members that are with us, Councilman Peter Brown and Councilman Tyler Bailey. I didn't know if you all wanted to say anything, okay. They've been in the trenches with us, y'all. All the council members, um, even those who couldn't be here today, we're very thankful that uh, one of the Richland One School Board Commissioners, Jamie Devine, is here, and our Superintendent of Schools for Richland School District One, Craig Witherspoon. Did you need to share anything, sir? Yeah, you're welcome to. If you sure. Thank you. Craig Witherspoon, Superintendent Richland County School District 1. Um, and first of all, I would like to thank all of the folks up here. Uh, because of the school system, we're a people business. We operate with a little over 4,000 individuals that are the families, that are the individuals that are impacted. So just as our emergency services individuals go out and about and check, we have staff that do the same thing. Our operations staff, including transportation, IT and the like, security, they go and check schools. Is there power up? Is there not full power, partial power? Are the freezers uh, okay for food items and, and, and the like? And they are also the same individuals that are without power, that are without uh, uh, food and those types of things. So my hat goes off certainly to those individuals here, but also to our, our, our staff. Uh, that, that steps up every single time. So over the weekend, we had approximately 15 to 16 schools either without power or partial power. And uh, Dominion uh, Energy, we, we've stayed in contact with them. Uh, we still have a number of schools right now 
that they're still trying to uh, uh, get power up. Uh, some damage to some schools with trees falling, some awnings that had fallen, and uh, folks are continuing to work. Uh, I certainly want to thank and, and recognize Sheriff Lott, uh, Chief Holbrook, because again, we work together. Uh, so as we had to close school, uh, not only because of, of, of power and the like, but we also assessed our staff, our transportation uh, fleet, our custodians, everyone, and uh, in going in, one of the main reasons for not having school uh, today was the fact that almost 25 to 30 percent of our bus drivers uh, could not get to work. And we triple ride our buses. The same drivers drive for uh, high school, elementary, and middle, and they could not get to work. Uh, so even in, in a perfect situation, we need a certain amount of staff to be there to transport because the majority of our students ride buses. Uh, we assessed uh, schools with staff as well, and a number of staff uh, not only live in our Richmond One footprint, but they live in footprints all over the Midlands. So as we assess staff and what would those staffing levels be today, uh, uh, the decision was made certainly yesterday that we could not have safely have school uh, with the supervision that was needed. Same goes for e-learning. We have that uh, capability to uh, operate remotely, but because of power outages and the like, um, uh, we did look at e-learning again on, on Friday. Uh, but that was not an option for us today, and we will continue to work through that. Uh, all of the superintendents in the Midland con Midlands continues to uh, talk and discuss, receive some text messages uh, as we were here in terms of what their plans are uh, moving forward. And we do the same in Richland 1 uh, in communication with Richland 2, Richlex 5, and all in, in, in the county. Uh, but we will continue to assess staffing and, and how those things will impact how we move forward. And we look forward to some announcements uh, in that regard later this afternoon as well. And again, I just want to end by, by what I've started. Uh, I certainly appreciate all of these uh, departments because we all depend on each other. The firefighters, first responders, they have students in our schools. And, and we all uh, are, are in this together, and we, we um, continue uh, to support the strong partnerships that we have, not only in times of emergency, uh, but in just day-to-day -day operations as we work together. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. um, Harry, our emergency management director, Harry Tinsley, he's the glue, so did you need to share anything? Thank you, Harry. Thank you to all of our city staff, back of the office functions that support everything that we're doing. I want to make sure Mayor Rickman can close us out and then we'll do question and answer. Even since we're being here, a testament to our community, uh, Sarah Fawcett with the United Way of the Midlands wanted us to get information out just quickly that they're working with the partner agencies as we speak to determine immediate needs. The Volunteer Center is gathering volunteer needs and opportunities and we'll push that out to the community this afternoon. United Way and Central Carolina Community Foundation are collaborating on a Midlands Relief and Recovery Fund. More to come soon on all of this. I, this morning was getting calls about folks who, you know, had lost their food supplies as a result of having power outages and what could they do. So we're hoping to work with our community partners to address these issues. Um, and I know Mayor Rickman may have some additional volunteer um, information that he's been receiving. So it's a team effort. And together, we are Columbia, as we like to say, but we're Columbia, we're the Midlands, we're, we're going to work through this together. And patience is a virtue. It's very difficult. We know that. But we also um, want to be transparent, and we will come back later in the week if we need to to give further updates. So with that, Mayor Rickman, do you want to have some closing remarks? Just want to say thank you for everybody being here. Thank you for our partnerships here. We thought it was very important to share this information with everyone. Over the last several days, I've been able to be in every part of this city, talking to residents, talking to our elected officials, school board members, everybody, making sure that we're sharing the information and we know what's happening. We know trees are down everywhere from Hendrick Street in North Columbia to Kilburn Drive to Claremont. 
out in Delverton and a lot of places have been hit across the city. This is a, a, a widespread storm and we're going to continue to work together to make sure that we get power, all your utilities and this city cleaned up to be back to be in the capital city. And that's our commitment. I also want to share that the Broad River Business Alliance has been collecting donations of everything from Gatorades to um, uh, essentials like toilet paper and other things to help distribute. They distribute a tractor tra trailer load of water yesterday to folks that may need, need that in their house. There are lots of resources out there. If you need something, let us know. We are here to serve you and we're going to continue to work together to get through this and become stronger for it. Thank you.